Okay, we have another integral here today. This one's from the UK integration B 2024, number four. We have the integral from zero to one, x to the a minus one times natural log x to the n dx. And we have these conditions over here. We want n to be a positive integer and we want a to be greater than one. Now, one thing you may notice is I've done this problem like eight times, 10 times, five times. I don't know, I've done this a bunch of times. And when I did this initially, I did it, I know I've had, I've done it a few different ways. I've done this using substitution and gamma function. I've done it with like integration by parts, getting a recursive formula. But I was looking back and I realized that this one's from the UK integration B. And there is this thing with UK integration B where I think they kind of expect you to use Feynman's trick on every integral. So I'm pretty sure I never did it that way. I just used the other methods. And I think the other methods are probably easier in this case. So I don't think this is probably the third best method, but it is interesting. So let's give it a shot. So to start with, I'm gonna create a new function. I need to parameterize something. I mean, we already have, we already have other parameters here, right? I could create a function in terms of n, or I could create a function in terms of a. What I'm gonna do is deal with this over here, but I don't really wanna deal with all of a minus one right now. Let's just deal with, let's think about f of a. And we'll create something kind of similar here. We'll have an integral going from zero to one. I'm just gonna do x to the a. I'm gonna leave off all this other stuff because what we have here, this, this is gonna be a really simple integral. So for this, of course, we can just integrate this knowing a is gonna be some constant value greater than one. So when we integrate, we get x to the a plus one over a plus one evaluated from zero to one. The zero is nothing, we plug in one. One to the a plus one is just one. So for this, we have just one to the a plus one. So this right here, this is nice and easy, but it seems kind of pointless, right? Because doing power rule is kind of a long way from dealing with natural log and integration by parts and all that stuff. So it's not really clear how we make use of this until we go ahead and we differentiate this function here. So what we do, we want a derivative f prime of a. When we do this, we're gonna differentiate as a partial inside of the integral sign. So we'll do it like this in here. But what I wanna do is I wanna differentiate on both sides of the equation. So we also wanna differentiate this. So when you do that, you're gonna have just minus one over a plus one squared. Then going ahead with this part right here, we just have to remember we're differentiating with respect to a on this. What I wanna do for the base, we don't really want the base to be x right there. So we can write it as e ln x. I mean, you can remember the formula, but it's just kind of, but it can just be kind of confusing when we're differentiating with respect to x. So I'm gonna do it out like this. So then if we differentiate this, we're gonna get back the same thing, e ln x times a. But then we need chain rule on this part with respect to a. This is just a constant, so when you do that, you're just gonna get out a natural log x. Then we can take this and write it back like this, and so we end up with natural log x times x to the a. So let's take this value and plug it back into our integral. And now you can kind of see the benefit of this because we just created natural log x. It's starting to look kind of like this. The problem is we don't just have natural log x, we have natural log x to the n. Well, what we can do is we can just do the same exact thing again, differentiate to get the second derivative on this. When we do that, we just did this. The natural log x is gonna be a constant. So we have this, we'll just kind of leave this aside as a constant. But when we differentiate this with respect to a again as a partial, we get back x to the a times another copy of ln x. So this becomes ln x squared. And then here we'll differentiate this again. This is gonna become a plus one cubed. And then we get a two up front. So we're just gonna get, so this, we'll write this as one times two up top. Well, what's gonna happen is we can do this as many times as we like. We can get a third derivative and it's just gonna work the same exact way. Another copy of ln x is gonna come out and we end up with x to the a ln x cubed. When you differentiate this again, the sign is gonna change. For each one, for each iteration, the sign is gonna flip and then we have one times two, just kind of writing it out. We get a three come up here and this is gonna become a plus one to the fourth. Well, if we do this enough times, we see the pattern. We kind of see that like, this is the third derivative. We get a three on the exponent, we get a three here. This is like three factorial right here. And then this is gonna be, if we have our third derivative, this is gonna be like three plus one or four right here. So what we can do is put together a formula for the nth derivative on this. And what it's gonna be, just looking at this, the sign is gonna alternate just like minus one to the end. We can write the sign, the sign change here, like it became a positive here. So we can capture that with minus one to the n. 
This is just gonna be n factorial right here, matching like the third derivative, we got three factorial. And then over, and then capturing this, we have a plus one to the n plus one. So now let me just rewrite this, showing it with the full integral the way we have it over here, just a quick rewrite. And now what do we notice here? This right here is pretty much our goal, our original integral here that we wanna find. There's one difference, it's this exponent. We have that a to minus one that we kinda, I kinda just cleaned it up at the beginning for just for convenience. But what we can say is our original problem, it's the same thing as the nth derivative, but not of a, of a minus one. So all I really need to do is just plug in a minus one into our function over here. You could do like a variable change, but it's not gonna be necessary. So we'll just plug this in. When you plug it in here, it's gonna be exactly this. Plugging it in here, we have mostly the same thing. We have minus one to the n times n factorial. You plug a minus one in here, you get a minus one plus one. The ones cancel out and we just end up with a to the n plus one. So if my final solution is we have minus one to the n, n factorial over a to the n plus one, and that's it. Okay, so there you go. Hopefully last time I'm doing this one, still pretty fun the eighth time. Um, <laughs> okay, so there you go. Good one today from the UK Integration B 2024. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.